Hi, welcome to Easter Egg. We're counting down to Easter and getting closer and closer to Easter Sunday. And we're looking at some snippets, snapshots, if you will, um, that are a bit surprising when you think about them and the way that we're presenting them uh, as we get closer to the Easter event. Today, I want to talk to you about um, 10 guys, 10 who ran. You know exactly who I'm talking about. Uh, they're the disciples. I mean, they had to have been embarrassed. They had been with Jesus. They were struggling with what was going on. Here's a group of guys who had been pushed uh, under persecution themselves. Um, and they had to feel just a little bit foolish when it was all said and done. When Jesus died, when he was arrested, And taken away, they had scattered. And they didn't stop until they had ducked into every available place to hide in Jerusalem. They were afraid they were going to be killed. Have you ever wondered what the disciples did that weekend? See, we don't have a whole lot of record about any of that. I wonder if they walked through the streets. I wonder if they thought about going home. I wonder what they said when people recognized them and asked them what happened. Well, 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 you see. I wondered if they stayed in pairs or in small groups or were better off to be alone. I wonder what they thought. I wonder what they felt. I know they felt like they had to run because they did. I know they were fearful that they would have all gotten killed, which is, of course, why they ran. Um, I'm sure they didn't understand what had happened. And that becomes clearer as we kind of unfold the events where, you know, again, clarity was going to come, but it wasn't there yet. Did they feel like they had failed or let him down? I'm sure they did. Did they feel like maybe Jesus could have done a better job of warning them? I guarantee you they did. Even though Jesus had endured it and suffered. But did they think he could have told them better, clearer? Sure, of course. Um, I wonder where they were when the sky turned black. I wonder where they were when the earthquakes happened. I wonder if they were near the temple when the curtain ripped or near the cemetery when the graves were open. I wonder if any of them dared sneak up the hillside and stand at the edge of the crowd and stare at those three silhouettes on the hill. They didn't stay, they ran. They were afraid, understandably so. It was a moment when it was time to be counted and it was going to be difficult to be counted because it might cost you something, something far greater than at that moment they were willing to pay. Would they get it right? Of course they would. History's gonna reveal later on what happened to these guys and they are going to be um, the team, the A-team that will start the first century church. But on that first Easter weekend, they're not that at all. They're afraid, terrified, and hiding. They don't know what to do. We've all had moments like that, haven't we? We've all had moments like that where we just didn't know what to do. We just didn't know um, how to act, how to react. We'd been surprised, caught off guard, and we just, we just have to get away. The great news that we find happens later is although they ran, they came back. And when they did, Jesus met them. He forgave them. And he gave them purpose to their life that they never had before. And they understood him better than they ever had. See, the running wasn't for nothing. The running gave them a chance to learn something about themselves, but more importantly, something that they would have to learn about Jesus. Just like when Jesus on the cross didn't quit, Jesus didn't quit on these men either. And as a result, they changed the world. Great news, if you're not aware, Jesus doesn't quit on you. And he wants to use you to change the world. Look forward to joining next time as we continue to look for Easter eggs.